All right, guys, I am back with a brand new DC update. I do appreciate all the support, and if you find these videos useful, please hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. I've heard from lots of people recently saying that they have missed videos or they're bringing me information, which I do appreciate for things that I've already talked about in previous videos that they haven't seen because the way the algorithm works on YouTube, they do not show you every video that gets released now. And so if you aren't subscribed and you haven't hit that notification bell, I guarantee you, you are going to miss something. Now, what we're going to do today is we're going to follow up with the debacle that happened the other day with Warner Brothers canceling the Coyote vs. Acme movie and then bringing it back. The fallout has definitely begun from that. And that's the first story we're going to look at. We've got a few things to look at today. We're going to look at some Superman uh, legacy information as well as Supergirl having found its writer. Well, maybe, maybe not. I wouldn't exactly call the person a writer. So we have a few things to look at here today. But let's start with the fallout from Warner Brothers' decision to cancel and then bring back this, this Coyote vs. Acme movie. So here you guys go. Filmmakers reportedly started canceling meetings they had on the books with Warner Brothers after they shelved Coyote vs. Acme. This is coming from The Hollywood Reporter. I saw this coming from a mile away, and I mentioned this in my last video. I could tell you that if Warner Brothers came to me and offered me a project, I would turn it down in a heartbeat. I wouldn't even bother to look at it because of the business decisions that they've made. There's no chance that those, there's a big chance that those projects will never see the light of day. The damage has been done, and, and I'm going to follow back and talk about the repercussions of this and what it's going to mean for Warner Brothers at the very end of this video because I think they're at a point of no return. So there was an article that came out from GQ magazine in the UK talking about Jacob Elordi, how he was actually asked to audition for Superman, and he declined. Now, I'm kind of glad he didn't even audition for this. I, I wouldn't want him taking the role. He kind of looks like the Superboy that they used back in the late 80s, early 90s for the Superboy show. Definitely doesn't look like Superman, uh, that is for sure. But when he was asked to audition for the role, he declined it. He said, that was immediately, no thank you, that's too much, that's too dark for me. Too dark. Now, I don't know if you ever saw the script, but, you know, I had people, I posted this on my, my, my uh, tick, I almost said TikTok, I don't even have TikTok, and I'll never be on TikTok, uh, on my X or Twitter account, and people came at me and told me I was taking this out of context. Well, that's what everybody was doing. And there is nothing indicating, I actually went and read the whole article with him, and it is long. And not once did he say anything that would lead you to believe that this isn't what he meant about this. And, and if they go dark with Superman Legacy, then that's going to be a slap in the face because everybody wanted Man of Steel too. In fact, there's a, a very well-known website called comingsoon.net that I follow, and they actually posted something on one of the media platforms today that asked, is everybody excited for Superman Legacy? And overwhelmingly, the answer was no. Uh, where's Man of Steel 2? People are not interested in this DCU the way people, the way the company would have you believe, or the minority of people that are very loud on social media would lead you to believe. It's just, the, the interest just is not there, especially with the project projects that they have decided to do, which I'm going to follow up with here in a few minutes. So the poster for Aquaman 2 was finally officially released. And to me, this looks like a fan-made poster, guys. It looks like there were supposed to be more people, more things on this poster, but they were taken out. It looks bizarre. Now, I do know the director said this is a buddy comedy film, and maybe that's what they were going for, but it looks like there were supposed to be more people on here, like Mara, possibly. But it looks like they have been digitally taken out. Now, this movie does come out December 22nd, which is also the same day of Rebel Moon. I will definitely be seeing Rebel Moon and getting my review up on December 22nd. If I end up going to see this, it's either going to be after Christmas or it's going to have to be... Uh, I'm hoping I get a chance to see it early so I can get my review up on my channel. But if not, I'm going to have to go and try and see it on the 21st when they do the early screenings. Uh, that's if I don't get invited to an early showing. I tend, I tend to get invited by Warner Brothers to go to those early showings, and uh, if, if I get one for this, I will take it. 
but I, I, I just don't. Yeah, I, I just, I have no interest in seeing this guy. It's the only reason I'm going to see it is because to get my review up on my channel for the DC review. I just, I just have no interest in this. I, I have as much interest in this as I did seeing the Marvels, and we saw how that ended up. Uh, this is going to be another comedy film that nobody really asked for. So this is kind of interesting, and this is where I wanted to follow up with my comments about projects that I don't think people are interested in. It says, Michael Rosenbaum read a Booster Gold script recently, auditioning for the role of Dirk Davis, the Hollywood agent for Booster Gold. The role is described as a Jeremy Piven entourage-type character. This would be Rosenbaum's second appearance in a DC show after playing Lex Luthor in Smallville. Good for him. Uh, he's a great actor. Uh, he's, he can be funny. He can be serious. He can do it all. And I like M Michael Rosenbaum a lot. But nobody asked for Booster Gold. Nobody asked for Creature Commandos. Nobody asked for these projects that are being done. And the projects that people really want to know about, like The Lantern Show, there hasn't been any information released. Instead, we're getting all of the stuff for the cheap stuff that aren't mainstream characters that nobody really asked for. And I know I'm going to get hate for this in the comments of people saying, well, I wanted to see it. I want you're, you're in the minority, guys. You're in the minority. I hate to tell you, but just because you wanted to see it doesn't mean it's a mainstream character or that the main, you know, the main audience wants to go see it. They simply don't. So here's the big news of the day. DC movie Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow finds its writer in Anna Nguera. Now, Nguera, Nguera, I'm not sure exactly how you say her name. It says the feature is part of the first wave of offerings from the James Gunn and Peter Safran led DC Studios. But she's not really a writer. In fact, we're going to look at her credits here, and I'm going to want some help from my audience on this, okay? It says that her acting credits, not her writing, her acting credits include The Vampire Diaries, The Michael J. Fox Show, and The Blacklist. As a playwright, she is known for penning the 2022 off-Broadway play, Which Way to the Stage, and is currently working on an adaption of Alice Sola Kim's Mother's Lock up your daughters. So she doesn't really, outside of which way to the stage, which I've never even heard of, and it's not even Broadway, it's off-Broadway, this is who they chose to write this important movie? Really? Really? That's who they chose. It seems to me that they're taking the cheapest route possible to start off this DCU doing weird off-the-wall stuff that nobody asked for, with a bunch of characters probably disgusting comedy. This is who they're choosing to write these important projects. But I think this is, this is also a symptom of what the company has caused for themselves. So let's talk a little bit about that. I am just amazed at this stage, at the spiral that both Marvel and DC have going on. How can you not see the problem with these companies? How can they not get back on track? You know, I already did my review on the Marvels and how horrible that movie was. And I likened it to James Gunn playing in, you know, play, being the sister playing with their brother's toys and not really caring about the toys. They just want to play in that, that sandbox. And that's what James Gunn is. He's the little sister who's playing with, with the big brother's toys but doesn't really care about them. Instead, he's doing weird off-the-wall crap that nobody asked for. And I, I it just amazes me. You know, one of the big pieces of news that got released today in regards to Marvel was the fact that the Kang Dynasty is no longer moving forward. It's been canceled and they're moving away from that and Doctor Doom is going to be the big, big bad guy of this next phase, which makes the current phase completely irrelevant when they've been building up Kang. Uh, you did it with with uh, Quantumania, you did it with Loki, and, and now they're moving away from it. it. It seems to be that they don't understand what the audience wants at all. And they're, they're, they've also announced this Young Avengers group that they're going to be putting together. Nobody asked for that either. Whoever's running these companies, greenlighting these projects, how can they not see that these projects are not going to do well? How? Who's running these companies and making these decisions? Now, let's talk about the fallout and what this is going to, how this is going to cause problems for DC moving forward because of what they did with canceling and then uncanceling the 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 uh, the Coyote versus Acme movie. And believe it or not, the saviors of the Coyote versus Acme movie were none other than Pam DeLuca or Pam Abdi and Mike DeLuca. They were the saviors again. 
It seems like those are the only two people down there at Warner Brothers Discovery that has any clue as to what's going on and is willing to stick up. They're the ones that care about the fans. They're the ones that actually care about the company. All the other people clearly don't. They just don't. They, they, they like want to burn the whole thing to the ground, which is just absolutely mind-boggling. This is going to keep, because of what happened and because it's public and what they've done with Supergirl, or not Supergirl, but Batgirl in the past, this is going to keep people from wanting to work with this company. It made the talent pool much smaller. So we're going to get second-rate writers. This just seems like this is a disaster waiting to happen. Now, if things end up being amazing, I will walk back all that stuff. I will I will praise it to the end of the, the ends of the earth, but I don't see that happening. I don't see any proof that this company is headed in the right direction. Now, if anybody is familiar with that play that Anna did, I would love to hear what the content of that play was. She doesn't really have any writing credits outside of that that anybody can go to to see if she's any good. And so this is just this is just bizarre, bizarre, bizarre. That's the best way, best way to say it. It's just absolutely bizarre. Anyway, there's my update for the day. I do appreciate the support. We will see you guys on the next video.